Hey guys, happy snow day. Uh, in this short video lecture today, I am going to be talking about Yuri Bronfenbrenner's article, Ecological Models of Human Development. Uh, and basically I'm going to go over the nuts and bolts of socio-ecological theory, which I personally love. I'm a big fan of Bronfenbrenner um, and all of the work that's been built off of that since. Uh, but basically, socio-ecological theory can be simplified into the idea that no one is an island. Uh, we shape and are shaped by the physical and social environments that we occupy throughout our lives. So the images that I'm showing right here are developed by Worth Publishers. This is uh, one of the images that's used in the textbook that I use for developing, for, sorry, for developmental psychology. Uh, this is from Kathleen Berger's book, The Developing Person Throughout the Lifespan. Um, and it's a really good way to look at socio-ecological theory, so I've pulled this in for our class today. First of all, we have our individual, uh, any and all of us, but we're not alone, as I mentioned. No one is an island. We actually interact and live and exist within many, many microsystems. Microsystems are our roles, our immediate interactions, family, school, peers, workplace. They have a direct impact on our day-to-day -day lives, on our experiences that shape our perspectives and our values. Microsystems exist within exosystems. These are the larger social institutions that themselves influence the microsystems and therefore influence us, even if not directly. The school system will influence our school, which will influence us. Our healthcare systems will influence our personal access to healthcare, which will influence us. Our mass media systems will influence what media is available and therefore what media we choose to consume. I don't know Donald Trump personally, and the things he does don't have a direct impact on me, but the choices that he makes as president influence the exosystems in our country, and those exosystems influence the microsystems, and then the microsystems have a direct impact on me. So like, Trump passes an order, he's not going to come to my house and enforce it, but the social systems I live in will change in response to those orders, and then that will change my life and will change me. Next we have our macro systems. These are the overarching patterns and customs and cultures and values and conditions that influence the exosystems, influence the microsystems, and influence the individuals. Are we at war? Are we in a recession? Do we believe in freedom? Do we believe in caste hierarchies? This is going to influence the way that our systems operate, our institutions operate, our microsystems operate, and we ourselves operate within all of this. And then, of course, all of this will change over time. Uh, all of these things, all of these things will change over time, and this leads us to the chrono system. Our medical institutions are different now than they were a hundred years ago. Our cultural values, our macro systems, what do families look like, how should you raise a child, they were different. Those expectations were different a hundred years ago, and therefore our micro systems, our families, were different a hundred years ago. Mesosystem basically means like these connections between the microsystems, between the microsystem and the exosystem and the macrosystem, all of the ways these different systems we operate in influence each other and carry that influence back and forth. All right, two more things that I want to, to point out to tie all of this together into this class. The first is I want to pull in yet another psychological theory. This one is called activity settings theory. The long and short of it is that we have a lot of places where we interact um, as humans, where we interact with each other. These are settings for activities, hence the name activity settings theory. Uh, we can think of these as the many, many, many microsystems that we move through during our daily lives. Our homes, our cars, gas stations, grocery stores, classrooms, trio, club meetings, work, restaurants, movie theaters, the gym, and community spaces like community gardens, for example. 
uh, as people spend time together in these spaces, and particularly as they spend time together in more and more shared spaces, uh, they share in more activities, in more activity settings together. And as we do this, we develop something called intersubjectivity. Intersubjectivity basically is that we develop a common understanding with each other as we have lots of shared experiences. We begin to develop shared perspectives in life and this common understanding that we begin to develop of the world and of people and of events is based on these common experiences that we have that we can draw from from our experiences but we're sharing them together and therefore our multiple pers perspectives have these similarities, have these commonalities. In the long term, over generations, intersubjectivity is how groups of people build culture. But in the shorter term, over days or months or years, intersubjectivity is how we build community. And so in our garden, we will have a microsystem, uh, an activity setting. Uh, it will interact with other microsystems. How? It will interact with exosystems. Again, how? Um, and it will interact with all of our macro systems that we live in. Once again, how? Uh, and over time, as we share these spaces and these activities, we will develop intersubjectivity amongst ourselves. We will have shared perspectives and shared knowledge. We'll have inside jokes. Uh, sometimes, for some things, we'll be able to look at each other and know what the other person is thinking because of these shared experiences that we've had. We'll develop and change as individuals, but we are not alone. We are not changing alone. The very nature of us coming together means that we are changing each other and we are changing with each other.